but per your example. Right, yeah, that just the budget so doesn't get rewritten, but the money gets money spent gets, somewhere else. Right. So I think it's, oh, I think that was the restraint that you were referring to, Ted. Right? Is you don't actually need a vote if you just simply underspend. Underspend, and it could be a directive given to underspend. That's what I'm saying. So you know, it's like, listen, this is what's Only going on. Parlance. We need X amount but of. But to power, move it into the budget, year, so it absolutely takes a vote. To change budgets, sure. Yeah. But but even well, if it's already in your budget, and I mean, you have you have. Uh, I mean, obviously. You wouldn't do it on your own initiative, but but you, I think you have control of it. So we it's we, a didn't the we didn't have the conversation on snow ice. We had the conversation specific to the capital project. That's where the issue was raised. Was raised. I, I dare say that even in the six years I've been here, we in fact haven't we have in fact underspent various parts of my public works budget in anticipating. Exorbitant snow and ice costs. So you know it, it it has been done. Right, but every time you do that, you're not doing other projects that you had in mind. Correct, correct. Yeah, exactly. It's not it's not foul money. It's just simply not carrying something out. Right. It's it's more of the. But in this instance, this is foul money. You were decrying earlier. Yeah. yeah. But in this instance, it it is foul money in the form of savings from the solid waste contract. And, and it would be nice to use it for something that we need. And if it's in your budget already, it makes sense. So, anyway. Uh, anything else on any of those subjects? No? Okay. Joe, thank you so much. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, good good luck with everything. Yep. Thank you all. I appreciate the. Your patience. I hope you weren't waiting too long. But it just went about an hour longer than I thought. No, we we entertained the viewing public for a while before we got. <laughs> those, those sidewalk blowers. Mm. <laughs> well, hopefully, one will be up in the morning, and the other one will be up by the end of right, the week. Right, it'll be clearing your sidewalk, darling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, uh, um, I hope it blows out to sea this weekend. <sighs> It's a wall coming across. <laughs> 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 it dives yeah. down a new wall. I didn't say you should see that show the dome. <laughs> yeah, it's, right. just, it's just coming across. Okay. Good luck, Joe. Good night, all. all right. Thanks. Thanks so much, Joe. Um, okay, we have we have uh, uh, a meeting tomorrow uh, with the library and police, and my suggestion is is uh, read the narratives um, and and call me during the day if you have some thorny question and that'll be our internal review um, <laughs> and, and bring the questions you know for for you know the the chief and, and uh, uh, the library director you know because they're they're uh, eager to answer them uh, the the ability to spend money is a little up in the air at the moment um, I had thought that there might be a little bit above contractual level to a portion here and there um, across some of the budgets. Uh, there may not be any. Uh, there may still be a little. We are dealing with, you know, eight hundred thousand dollars or so in, in requests above contractual level for um, the town and about eight hundred thousand for the schools. Um, I think we can we can knock off some of it, but we're back to the drawing board for the next couple of days, and we'll see. Um, I certainly understand. I think where this committee sits, stands, and I'll relate that to anybody I talk to. Um, Could I just clarify something that Joe sure. said about capital? What happened at the meeting? Sure. It was one member's memory of the discussions that surrounded the determining the four hundred and fifty thousand dollars that that amount of money would be given to both departments, and then they would work it out about the breakdown. So if if they decided that it was three hundred and fifty, <coughs> capital was fine with that. So what was the issue? 
Well, Joe said that there was one member that kept saying it was 450,000, and that was it. And the breakdown was assumed to be 50-50. That, according to this member, I wasn't there at the meetings when this was discussed initially, mm -hmm. but the 300, 150 was not something I think that Therese had expected. But she thought I think it was gonna be 225 each. So the capital committee really didn't have the input into the breakdown. They, according to the members' memory, they left it up to the two departments to work it out, hoping that they could work it out. But understanding all the time that we knew, or the capital committee knew at the time they were underfunding the project. They just didn't have the money. That sounds about right. I think I was in that I room. I think you might have been there. <laughs> yeah. No, I, no that's, that sounds all right. We knew it was... You know, it was a kind of a stretch, and it was based on the idea that the members of both the cemetery staff and the DPW are in the same union. And we thought, gee, for a change, maybe there could be a little collaboration, cooperation. Mm -hmm. They're not that far apart, okay? Um, but the problem was really the cemetery was looking for a garage. And, and, and the DPW was looking for, you know, a staff facility, break room, and, you know, improved <clears throat> showers and that kind of thing. So they were looking for kind of two different things. How are you going to share that? Um, I think the capital committee at the time wanted to encourage the projects, didn't have quite enough money, and I don't think the projects were ready for, for solid, you know, they didn't have solid quotes either. So. I, think, I think the money's already been borrowed. Great, so we should spend it. Yep. It should go fast track. I mean, I think, I think it should get fast tracked. There's a union grievance involved. I think it's, I think it's, uh, Definitely. I think the conditions. Take care of it. Paul and I, Paul and I took a tour with Darnell. Darnell. Yeah, yeah. Three of us. Um, back I mean, in December. Back in so. December. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't you, any snow. There was a huge salt pile. Uh, <laughs> That's probably gone now. Um, yeah, but no, um, the, the place over there is horrific. It's in really bad shape. And it's then really they take us shape. into the. Um, it's really depressing. It's yeah, I mean, shower facilities, so the break rooms. It, there is no shower facility. It's like one stall yeah. where they have to go outside, really, and simply yeah, crank. It's, it's, the water up to get it going. It's the just only way you bad. get heat into the shower is by leaving the door open. open. This doesn't do a lot for the female members of the staff or the male members. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just, it's, just, it's a horror show. Yeah. And it ought to be fixed. Yeah. And, but anyway, and I, I, I'm, yeah. Okay. And Phil. What is the balance in the reserve fund? Balance in the reserve fund. Oh, there, there's another issue. I mean, if, 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 it's about, it was about $450,000, <coughs> and then we set aside 317. 317,225 set aside for the, um, the Hendry's. Hendry's project, Hendry's. so there's only 132,775 left. Maybe. Unless, of course, the, you know, depending on what the timetable on the Hendry's project is. In, in years past, when we were looking for money for things like snow and ice, the selectmen would have the town administrator send a note out to the various departments. Don't count on any reserve fund money this year. Stay within your budgets. We have a place to use that reserve fund money. So any amount of money we can use for that to reduce the snow and ice budget makes it a little bit easier to yeah. find money for the rest yep. of it. So I think we ought to ask the selectmen if they would consider doing that. I think well, it's... I think it's yeah, it may be too late. I mean, we just heard from the fire chief that he's gonna, probably going to present us with an RFT for $100,000 for over 10. Let him deal with the town administrator. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, I tell you, though, for what you're saying is the biggest bite out of our reserve fund is sitting on this Henry deposit that's held over by the selectmen, which we have for, like, two years now, been sitting on large sums of money, for this project that has, you know, that long bridge to nowhere. Yeah. This project getting done has been a long bridge to next year, you know, <laughs> again, you know. So there's, you know, 300,000 sitting there for us to do something with, and it's hurry up and wait, guys. Oh, we need this yesterday, but it sits there, you know. 
well, forever. It would be a great time to take this building down because the trolley's not running. They wouldn't have to no. spend that money on yeah, uh, that too. tea well, service. The range this weekend, sure. it may come down anyway. <laughs> That's true, too. I'm sure That's nobody's true. shoveling that roof. <laughs> no. The problem with the demolition cost or the projected demolition cost is even if it were to be postponed, we still have to fund it with, for, we would still need to fund it for fiscal year 16. 16 that we're working on right now. So that money, you know, wouldn't, I mean, timing wise, might be helpful for snow and ice and get the bills paid, but we still have to appropriate money one way or the other for that demolition until something happens that obviates the need. You know, I mean, if, if, uh, if it came down on its own or if, or if, um, that was a great, that was a great article you sent me, Steve, about the building that fell down because they'd been dithering about taking it down. Where was that? Was that in Worcester or something? Something like that. Yeah. The, anyway. the problem with that is that once that, if it does fall down, it's not like it's going to implode. No. So you still got rubbish removal. You got, right. yeah. you got to go in there and tear it down, emergency tear downs now yeah. because what wall stood up and stayed up and... So it's the, the, only, the only salvation would be to have uh, would be if the developer decided to foot the bill for the demolition in exchange for the property or something like that. But I think they've they've explored those options. Paul, <laughs> motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow.